reacting to rappers or hip hop stars. Watch us. Nico's back in suits. The daddy is back in suits, right? I need to s get some mad ties because I'm like, I constantly wear the same tie because that's the only tie I have in my office, not the only tie I have, by the way. I'm currently wearing an H. Moser and Chai and if you want to buy or sell your watch, go to prideandpinion.com. This video is sponsored by Shopify, but more on that later. Let's get stuck in the wrappers. Literally. Central C. That guy blew up like a mother didn't he? Holy f I never heard of uh, Central C. And then that was TikTok, something, what was that tune called again? With no, that's Sprinter. I f love yeah, that tune. Doja. Doja Cat. So I, li I literally listened to that song on repeat for two hours. This guy is the daddy. This guy is the duh. God tier, motherfuckers. That's what he is. Look at that watch. Doesn't give a f And that's how it should be. Not giving a f that's why you wear G-Shock. G-Shocks is only for proper G's, you know? Top G's wear G-Shock. But a beautiful, to be fair, beautiful Rolex Day-Date. Uh, is that rose or yellow? It's really hard to see. Can't even see the dial color. It looks like, a, looks like the brown dial yellow. is yellow gold. Then it's not the brown dial. I think it's black dial, is it? Could be black. I don't know, the light is shit. What you see here is the God there G-Shock, but also the Rolex Day Date reference number 228238, the anniversary Day Date, the watch that was introduced in 2015 to replace the Day Date 41. Perfect Day Date, what I believe is. It's the perfect Day Date. Like, I mean, it's everyone's grail. Everyone, every rapper and his dog wants a presidential bracelet. But you know what? In Day Dates, this is one of the, this is basically one of the starters within the Day Dates. It's not Daddy Day Date, like, I mean. The Rolex Day Date was first introduced between 1955 and 1956. The reason I say between 55 and 56 is the 60th anniversary of the Rolex Day Date was introduced in 2015. The books say it was introduced in 1956, but Rolex Behavior says it was introduced in 1955. It's a bit of a weird one. The Rolex Day Date was introduced with two reference numbers, 6510 and 6511. Both featuring... Both featuring... Both featuring a... Both... Both featuring the presidential bracelet... Or... Both featuring the presidential bracelet. The fluted bezel, basically the iconic day-date shape. The first wristwatch to ever have the full day and date written on the dial. People call this the presidential watch for a reason. And that reason is, of course, several US presidents have worn this watch. Did you know that the Rolex day-date was only produced in precious metal, publicly for sale? It's never been made in steel for the public. There is a prototype, or there's one or two prototypes of a full steel Rolex day-date, but these were never made meant for the public. Also quite cool is that the Rolex Day Date until 2008 was only produced in 36 millimeter, meaning that that watch is now considered really, really small for man. In 2008, Rolex introduced a blown up bigger, like a proper blown up Day Date. Like it looked like it was blown up, like a complete out of proportion called the Rolex Day Date 2. And that was a 41 millimeter case with a really big bezel. It was just, it wasn't the prettiest of Day Dates, to be honest. However, in 2015, they replaced the Day Date 2 with now the Day Date 40, which is the watch you see here. Central C, mother a year ago, this watch was like swapping hands for $45,000, $50,000. But today's value is a wee bit lower. Today, the value of this watch sits between thirty-six dollars and $40,000. I'm not really sure, but in this photo, it looks like he's also wearing a day date, but it could potentially be the same one. Although in the first photo, it looks like it was yellow gold because that's what Johnny said, because I'm colorblind as f I cannot see the color, so I just don't know. But this looks like a day date, and you say that looks green and rose gold. So that means that this is the olive green Rolex day date. Yep. The anniversary day date. The one that was introduced to celebrate the 60th anniversary on the 59th year of the... Very confusing. What you see here is the 228235. Absolutely love that watch because this is one of the nicest dials ever produced. Keep in mind, the combinations nowadays are fixed, right? Presidential bracelet, fluted bezel, they're all the same, but the only thing you can choose is the dial, really. Back in the day, you could were able to go to an authorized dealer, even a few years ago, like two years ago, you were able to go to an authorized dealer with a normal day date and say, I want a different dial on that. And they would order you a dial and they would fit it for you, right? That's not possible anymore. But back in the day, even in the early days, you were able to choose the bracelet. You could get a gold jubilee bracelet on the day date. That is shit, right? That time is over. This is known as the anniversary day date in this exact configuration. Nowadays, you cannot order that dial separately. But two years ago, you were able to do that. Like you bought a rose gold day date with a brown dial and you wanted the green one, then it would swap it over for, I believe, 170 pounds. And nowadays, they say, 
off. A lot of people done that because a year ago this watch was going for like close to $90,000. Today this watch is still fetching a small premium, not as much as it was in the past, but this watch would now swap hands between forty dollars and $50,000 realistically. And then we have the daddy f***ing Daytona. It's not the daddy Daytona, but it is, I believe, the most beautiful Daytona ever produced. I have this watch, the 116508 Green Dow. Again, green. I love green. I'm colorblind, but I can see a color green. So this is a specific form of color color blindness, right? It's introduced in 2016 for the first time. And discontinued about a year ago. Nearly a year ago. Introduced together with the white gold Daytona, the 116508. Oh, nine, the Blue Dial White Gold Daytona. This watch was introduced at exactly the same time as the Ceramic Rolex Daytona. White and Black Dial, the Panda and the Black Dial Daytona. So therefore, whenever this watch was launched, no one really talked about this watch when it was launched because all the attention went to the Ceramic Daytona. The first time a ceramic bezel featured on the Daytona. That was long overdue, I'm not gonna lie. But this one, this one was a sleeper. The hype around this watch started when John Mayer made a comment about this watch. Therefore, this watch got a nickname, the John Mayer Daytona. There's not many people in the world that have a watch named after them, but John Mayer is definitely one of them. During an episode on Houdinki with Talking Watches and Ben Clymer from Houdinki and John Mayer spoke about this specific watch. And keep in mind, this watch was going for normal retail, a wee bit of a discount even. But after that video, that watch went absolute madness. At the top of the market, people were paying over $125,000 for that watch. Today is a wee bit more normal. We're still paying a premium for this watch, but the average value sits between fifty dollars and $60,000. This watch will go down in the history book. So at a certain point in life, in 10, 20 years, this watch will be extremely valuable. The Richard Mille RM11 flyback chronograph. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh... He's doing well with his music, I believe. Mark. That's the last ever, not the last ever Reshot Meal RM11, by the way, but it's the last ever Reshot Meal RM11 Filippo Massa series. Like, there was this limited edition run, right? So you have the RM1101, uh, 02, 03, and then you have the FM, the Filippo Massa. Now, you have several things, right? My personal preference is the RM1102 because it has a GMT function. They're, they're all mad, right? But the RM11 Philippe Massa was a limited edition run of watches in several metals. Rose gold or yellow gold, titanium, white, black, blue, whatever. I don't even know. I don't think white, don't think black. But you get the gist of it, right? But the last of that series was made in this f***ing... Is that burgundy blue or what, what the f*** is that? Not baby blue, but what the f*** do you call that blue? Sky blue? No! No! I don't know. It was some form of blue. What do you call that? Turquoise! That's the one. That's, that's the one. That's the one, right? Turquoise. Turquoise blue. A limited edition run of 50 pieces. And for you to get that watch, you had to be buy another reshot meal. So this watch retailed at the time at probably have $160,000, $170,000. I think he would have paid around $350,000, $400,000 for this watch, which is still the accurate, relatively accurate uh, market value today. But that watch makes a statement with that collar. And whenever the 5711 Tiffany was introduced, every watch with that collar died. Every watch with that color or was in any way shape or form connected to that color from Rolex with that same color dial Every single one of them shot up in price like mad and still the Oyster Perpetual which cost about five and a half thousand dollars still today goes for over twenty thousand dollars It's insane, but this is Unbelievable. It's discontinued, not in production anymore, but that's a wee bit of horological history. That is a wee bit of watch porn. You porn any way, shape, or form porn. This is this is good shit. Like I genuinely get a get a wee bit like aroused by that, you know. Drizzy Drake. That is Drake's mate. He got some mad new watches. But before we get into that, I want to talk to you about Shopify. Shopify is the best all-in-one commerce platform in the world, period. I have used Shopify with my business, Bright and Pinion, from the start, from 2019. It allows me to control my business from wherever I am in the world with one click of a phone button. These are one of my favorite features of Shopify. At one click, I can see how many visitors there are on my website right now. I can see where in the world they're from. I can click on it, Switzerland, Italy, United Kingdom. I can see how much business I've done. I can see what watches we sold. I can see customer behavior. So I can see the last 10 minutes, we got an active cart and someone is currently checking out on the website right now. All that is fun and games, but more serious stuff like customer data, a CRM system, an inventory system. With one click of a button, I can see how many watches we 
have in stock what the actual value of those watches are combined if you own a big business that sells product to consumers or if you are thinking to start your business Shopify is where you should start today you don't need to have any experience with computers or systems or whatever even I can do it and I can't even boil an egg mate click on the first link in the description to read more about Shopify I want to do a full video about Drake's watch collection alone because he has some f belters one of which is this insane remember the green dial daytona john mayer stuff what we talked about earlier this is the off catalog version of that exact watch so off catalog means it's not in a f catalog off catalog pieces are only reserved for the most special clients and he is one this is the thing with rolex off catalog right a lot of people don't notice but the best stones ever in the world in this case baguette diamonds these are the best stones in the world period these are the daddies full factory set green dial daytona this is rolex reference number 116568br and br stands of course for brilliant i hate that shit, right did you need to have bought a 100 Rolexes is enabled for you to buy something like this. But it is what it is. These are the rarest watches on the planet. Let me tell you, he has a few. And this watch is the f daddy. I'm not sure how much this is worth because I think there's only one in the market today. Th this will be a guess. I believe that these watches go between 280 and 325 thousand dollars but this is a sheer guess because there's only one on the market today that could be a fake ad as well that's how rare these watches are drake has so many insane watches i i want to do a video specifically about his new watch collection and i need your help because i would love to do the same video as i done with luke holmes so do me a favor reach out to drake send him a dm a email find out who his manager is someone can figure this shit out and help us to get drake to speak about his collection for the first time. The world deserves that. The world deserves to hear from such an icon as Drake. Here, here, f***ing right. That's a day day. <laughs> this is another off catalog piece. This guy has so many mod pieces. I remember a video recently, I was scrolling through YouTube, you porn, you know, you know what it is. I saw a video of Drake, right? I saw Drake wearing this mad crazy white gold Daytona with the soda light dial. No one has ever spotted him wearing that watch. I saw him wearing that watch. It was f***ing daddy sh Reference number 116509. Crazy, crazy piece. And now, seeing here, this photo, he must have been one of the first ever to wear this day date. Another off catalog piece as well. This is the rare off catalog Rolex day date. Reference number 128458 TBR. The cool thing is about these sapphires, right? Normally they're quite dark, but these, these aren't really that dark. They're quite almost transparent. You rarely see that with colored sapphires. So again, that shows that Rolex uses the best stones in the world again the whole bezel is full with baguette diamonds the highest single set by the way only for jewelers know this sh single set so it's only attached to the bezel with one point like this watch is insane i think it retailed it's still it's still in the catalog this is off catalog now but it's still a current model they're only going to make a handful of these watches anyway but i believe that this watch went for about 125 130 dollars market value of this sits it's very similar because this is a more niche watch it is a more in your face type of watch it doesn't have a bracelet it has a leather strap i do believe it still sits around that value maybe in and around 150 thousand dollars there's not many in the world for sale anyway i believe that he's gonna be he's one of the first ones ever to wear that and definitely him wearing that watch would have made an impact on the value of that watch as well it would have put that watch in the market he wears a lot of big watches right although forget about he, he also i believe has a cartier crash factory set cartier crash i've seen him with that like i'm now spoiling the beams right i'm now spoiling all the fun but he has i know a few of his watches are Knots. This is a 36 millimeter watch. This is not a big day day, and that is cool. I like that. I appreciate that. Whoa! I did not. I didn't expect that to be honest. Pharrell Williams. You know he's like 60 or something or 50. But look at him. If you tell me he's 18, I would believe it as well what a man he has always been and he is still is such a cultural icon it's just insane the watch he's wearing is an absolute dog shit, right it's horrendous it's that new up thinnest movement in the world piece of shit, right it's a ferrari collaboration with richard meal so you have richard meal probably the best the most innovative manufacturer of extreme ultra hyper luxury timepieces and they have ferrari the main supercar brand in the world make supercars hypercars it is the prime of automotive and then coming together producing this piece of shit, i've never never seen anything like it it just blew my mind so thin it is a weird shape it is a 
fucking weird watch. And it cost 1.7 million or something. <laughs> This is Richard Mille and Ferrari just taking a piss out of the whole world. Horrible, at best. Keep in mind, Ferrari also made watches with Panagai with the same logo, but they're now like two, three grand. Like, I mean, you can buy them for that much. This is just a piece of shit. But Pharrell Williams, what a guy, what an icon. Tyler, the creator. I have heard his name, I have no clue who he is. Cartier Crash, beautiful. Holy f did he rob his mom's cabinet with jewelry jesus christ man loves his car che. i sometimes make fun of this right these small dingy weird looking car chase it's quite unique and to be honest when you've collected it all when you have every rolex in the world and whenever everyone is always talking about rolex this is a cool way to stand out and i feel that there's a big car che bubble coming and I, I like it but i don't right it's like the types of people that wear it are not always hippies wear that shit. You know? You know what? Uh, that's unique. People like him wearing watches like that, that will actually have an impact on the future value of these pieces. Because now all of a sudden people want a Cartier Tink and a Cartier Crash. And my knowledge regarding vintage Cartier is quite limited. And rightfully so, because I'm I'm just I'm not feeling that division of the watch industry. There's a few content creators that literally jerk themselves off on this stuff every day talking about this. And I love that. It's good for our industry. It's just not to my taste.